You know, it's estimated there are 30 million, 30 million interactions between law enforcement and Americans on an annual basis. But everyone's focused on the 3% results in some type of force and the less than 1% where a gun is actually drawn. Because of the advent of the body camera, we think we know what a law enforcement officer goes through. We don't. But that's why we're here with the Nassau County Police Department, one of the top police departments in the country, to talk with Commissioner Pat Ryder. Commissioner, thanks so much. So you have police reform being discussed at the highest end of Washington. Bipartisan agreement, something's coming down. There's a you lot worried? of Yeah, there's a lot of reform that is good, and we, we can always adjust, we can always do better. But a lot of times when you take the tools away from officers, officers get hurt. We're gonna show you the training that our officers go through daily in different tactical situations and, and scenarios out there in the street, and hopefully you'll get a better understanding. You'll get the truth, as you said earlier, about what we go through. Commissioner, nobody talks about police reform and doesn't bring up no-knock warrants. We're gonna get rid of no-knock warrants after what happened with Breonna Taylor. You have a scenario here that talks about the pluses and the minuses of no-knock warrants. Right, we're gonna run you through the tactical training house. We're gonna show you a, how, a room that we're gonna hit. It's got drugs, guns, MS-13 gang members in, the, in that room. If we do it as a non-dynamic entry, we get shot at, they get shot at. That's not what we want. By doing a no-knock warrant, it gives us that advantage that they don't get to their weapons and we get to secure them. Keeps everybody safe. If you got a knock, that's a heads up, isn't it? Absolutely. What people have to remember is that we train to do a no-knock warrant to keep not only us safe, but keep the perpetrator safe. We're coming in. We know he's a drug dealer. We know he's got guns. We don't want to shoot him. What's the dangers? What's the possibilities of around going through and hitting somebody in another apartment? Right. All of this comes into play, and that's why we do a full intelligence workup. We run through scenarios tactically. We'll run you through a scenario now where we're gonna show you how, if we don't knock, if we, I mean, if we do knock and give notice, you'll see the difference now. Okay. Now watch, they wake up. I'm gonna go hide. Shots fired, shots fired. Subject down, medic up. Red. Police reform comes out of Washington. That very likely could be the scenario way too often. You saw the same scenario, same position, same timing, everything. The difference is we got shot at and the perp got shot, he got wounded and possibly could die. Every training scenario that we have is an event that happens somewhere in the country. Some law enforcement interaction. We learn from our mistakes. It's, history teaches us to do better. Another scenario that you've brought to our attention, you've been surveilling what could be drug or gang uh, activity. You've been watching this for hours. You're waiting for someone to come out. This way you don't have to put everybody at risk and go in. Come on, man. So once they're out of here, then the next stage moves into execute the warrant. I'm seeing the coordination. There's a lot of training that goes on here. Yeah, we're one of the lucky ones. So we train daily. And that's the key. You see some of these small departments in these smaller towns across this huge country, and they just don't have the same training, they don't have the same resources, but yet the same stakes, right? Training should be universal. That's one of the things that, if they're going to look at reform around the country, you have to train everybody to the same level. If you're gonna do human infrastructure, why not police infrastructure in order to get the training universal? It's not a time to defund, it's a time to invest. When you invest in policing and you train right, you'll get the better outcome. Tomorrow we'll have part two, but I want to bring in Curtis Slewa now for two reasons. He's running for mayor for the Republican ticket, and he's also got uh, decades of law enforcement experience as the founder of the Guardian Angels. Curtis, have you ever seen us at this point in this country where we're blaming police for everything? No, Brian. In fact, uh, our elected officials who are guarded 
by armed police officers 24 7 are the first to scream to defund the police, but they don't want to strip themselves of their own police protection. That endangers people out in the streets. So you're right, I'm running for mayor of New York City, and it's one issue, law and order, refund the police, hire more police, take them from the zeros that we've created in the aftermath of the death of Mr. Floyd in the streets of South Minneapolis to the heroes that they've always been, the essential workers that they've always been. I don't know if you're aware, Brian, and your listeners, but this week is Police Appreciation Week throughout the United States. How many of us are stopping and thanking the men and women of the department for risking their lives for the service that they do each and every day? How many ceremonies are there? I can tell you in New York City, there's none. And I'm going to make sure, as the next mayor, I'll have a ceremony each and every time a police officer does a heroic act. But more importantly, when they're doing the average everyday work that we take for granted, we need to refund the police, hire more police, and make them the heroes that they've always been before. And finally, Curtis, we're watching people come back to work. We saw Times Square begin to be crowded again, and we saw bullets in the middle of the afternoon on a Saturday. Is this going back to the bad old days of the 70s and 80s? Can we switch it now, or is it too far? Far gone. No, we're slipping into the abyss because this mayor, Comrade Bill de Blasio, the part-time mayor, the dope from Park Slope, has taken a Miley Cyrus wrecking ball to the city by emasculating the police. And as I run for the mayor, I'm going to resurrect this city on law and order, making the streets safe, the subways safe, the parks safe, by strengthening the police. You want to help me out there in America? Take this city back from the Democrats who have weakened our police. Go to Curtis Sliwa for mayor.com. That's Curtis Sliwa for Mayor.com and join me in my fight to resurrect New York City and to restore the police on the pedestal that they've always earned rightfully to be on this Police Appreciation Week. I hope all of you out there in America are going out and about and appreciating right. your police officers because unfortunately in New York City we're not. I just should tell you, he left a great job at 77 WABC following me on the lineup to run for mayor. And remember, Republicans can win. Mike Bloomberg won as a Republican, and so did Rudy Giuliani. Best of luck, Curtis. I'm going to do it. I'm going to save our city with your help out there at Curtis Sliwa for mayor.com. All right, go. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.